Liz Crosby here today with another yoga flow. And we'll start in broken toe pose, Padrasana. So tuck your toes, six feet on top of your heels. You can squeeze the thighs together, find neutral pelvic fold, align the spine. And this practice is going to be completely saturated with breath work or pranayama techniques. We are already practicing Ujjayi pranayama when we practice vinyasa but incorporating some specific pranayama techniques to really bring our awareness to the breath and also maybe breathing life force energy into some unique spaces that don't otherwise perceive it unless we fully immerse ourselves in this alchemical process of excavating the microcosm. So once you've found your seat, sweep the hands out and up, thumbs point towards each other, press the fingers into the mounds of the hands, spiral the eyes of the elbows towards each other, Plug the arms into the shoulder sockets. Inhale deeply through the nose. Open the mouth and pant like a dog. Take that up into your nose. Spine knees at the knee. Inhale to feel the chest forward up. And exhale to round. Moving in and out of your cat cow shapes, connecting your breath with your movements. When you're ready, take it into your bear pose, hip circles, shoulder circles, arm pose, bend the spine. Let your breath inspire your movements. Water takes on. Now the air element takes on a very water-like quality as it flows through the cardiovascular system. Puppy dog pose, walk the knees back, walk the hands forward, melt the heart down towards the mat, maybe forehead to mat, maybe chin to mat, maybe the whole chest reaches the ground. And roll it forward into your sphinx pose, hips to mat. Elbows stacking underneath shoulders, broadening across the collarbones. And then quickly just to activate deep core muscles, pressing down to the bridges of the feet, lift the hips up and down to the shoulders. And move, lift, and move. Once more, lift, and load. Now drop right ear towards right shoulder, left chin out through chest, left your left shoulder, breathing into your cervical spine. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Back to the center. Now extend arms forward, palms facing towards one another. Lift right arm and left leg. Slowly lower left arm, right arm. Lower right arm, left. Lower and switch. Both arms and legs lift. Cactus the arms, press down with your fingertips, lift your chest up. Drop right shoulder gaze over your left. Inhale through center. Exhale, twist. Inhale through center. Exhale in a twist. Back through to center as you inhale. And exhale to slowly release the spine back down. Hands come behind the back, interlace. Press palms together, reach hands back behind, reach out through the balls of the feet. Spiraling your thighs up towards the ceiling. Tuck the chin and extend out the crown. Keeping the engagement in the back of the core, release the interlace, hands like underneath the shoulders, press up, lift up, cobra, wrap elbows in, roll shoulders back. Exhaling back into your child's pose. Release the hips towards the heels, roll the spine forward over your thighs. Rest for all the moment. Roll your spine up through to seated. Now keeping the toes untucked, lean your weight back, lift your knees up, and you lift on top of the toe, knuckles. Slowly lower back down again. Walk the hands forward back into your tabletop. Spread the fingers wide. Tuck the toes, hips rise up and back, downward facing dog pose. Walk out, bending one knee on the other, allow the hips to shift. 
from side to side, breathing into the calves, the hamstrings, the lower back. Walking the feet to the outer edges of the mat. Walk the hands back just halfway. Shorten your down dog. Right hand at center of the mat. Thread the left arm through. Catch your right ankle and take a twist. Bringing the spine out of toxins. Deeply drain breaths. Again, we're not just going through the motions and holding the 3D physical form. We're also illuminating the space with spirit. Switch left hand plants, right arm goes through and catch the left ankle. All of these shapes offer up opportunities to share life force energy. Feel into all of these sensations with your breath work. I love that pranayama, another translation is energy work, not just breath work, but energy work, right? The air element conveys information. And walking it back out again, back into your downward facing. And from downward facing dog pose, lift the heels and tiptoe the feet all the way to the front of the mat. Release the heels down, and as you feel the chest forward, find some length arch. Step the left foot back, left knee lowers, untuck toes, sweep the arms up, low crescent pose, extend across the heart center, from across the collarbones. Exhaling, hands come down to the mat. Straight through the right leg. Come onto the heel of the right foot. Reach the toes back towards your face. You can tilt the foot from side to side. Breathe into the calves, the hamstrings. Rebending in the right knee. Tuck the left toes of the left knee. Left hand plants, right arm scoops as you inhale. Twist the spine open. Gaze at the right fingertips. Amazing. Rotate onto the outer edges of both feet. Let the left hip dip. Reach the right hand back behind you. Saturate this space, especially the outer hip, with oxygenated blood flow. Both hands to the instep of the right foot. Come onto the heel of the left foot. Coming into your stern basana. Walk it back and forth from side to side. And for this first round, keep the hands on the mat. Really connect to those deep core muscles, especially deep down low in the pelvic floor. Connecting to your mula bandha, nice and slow, no rush, kind of warming those muscles up. And walk the hands over to your left foot. Bring the left foot with your hands, right knee lowers. Untuck toes, sweep the arms up, low crescent pose. Expand across the heart center. Exhale, hands down to the mat, straight through the left leg. Come onto the heel of the left foot, reach the toes back towards your face. Again, you can tilt the foot from side to side. Rebending in the left knee. Tuck right toes with right hand. Right hand plants, inhale, left arm sweeps, gazes at the left fingertips, deep Ujjayi breaths. Again, Ujjayi means proud conqueror's breath, so we are conquering new territory within the microcosm, sharing life force energy with new space. Rotate to the outer edges of both feet, now let the right hip dip. Left hand comes down to the left knee, or you can reach the left hand back behind. Breathe into the IT band, intercostals. Beautiful, both hands to the instep of the left foot. Come onto the heel of the right foot, back into your sconce. Now again, you can, if you want to, keep the hands grounded, or maybe float them up. Optional, again, really tune in to your pelvic floor muscles. Make sure that they're ready to go there. And then walk the hands over to your right foot. Bring the right foot with your hands. Step the left foot forward to meet the right foot, front of the mat. Inhale as you feel the chest forward, find some length of arch. Exhale, forward fold. Chair pose, bend your knees, both arms sweep. Shift weight into your big toe mounds, heels lift, and slowly lower it down. Knees open wide, reach your arms straight through, gently take a seat, float your feet. Navasana, dog pose, maybe straighten through the legs. 
Inhales, you lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. And inhale to lower, pause and hold, breath of fire. Three, two, and one, lift. So the feet come together, knees out wide, hands are feet pressed, elbows into inner thighs. And as you find length of the spine, exhale, forward fold, breathe into your lower back. Rolling the spine back and through to seated. And draw your knees in, feet wide. Hands behind hips, press up, lift up, malasana squat. Elbows into your inner thighs. Now you guys know I love this transition because it does teach you how to firmly turn your arms for Chaturanga Dandasana. And if it is a little bit beyond your uh, skill set, that's okay. You can still practice the crow pose and then just step the left foot back. Right, it will teach you how to firmly tone your arm muscles. So often people try to skip this step, which can cause RSI if they just go straight into a heavy vinyasa flow, right? So knees come high up in towards the armpits. We wait for them to one or both feet. Doesn't mean that it's easy, right? <laughs> Sometimes people skip this step because it's not easy. Those of you that want to, you can take it up into your headstand. Crown to ground, press it up, lift it up, reach your eyes. Optional, optional, optional. Feel free to skip it. Slowly lower. Knees come high up and in. Press up, lift up. Crow pose. Shift weight into right shin, left leg extends. Like the Padmakasana. Step the left foot way back, right foot steps between the palms. Left foot swings down to 45. Inhale, rise, warrior one. Both arms sweep up. Hands come behind the back, interlace, broadening across the collarbones as you inhale. Exhale to hinge from hips, lead with heart as right shoulder passes right knee, then begin to round. Lengthen the whole spine up and out of the pelvic bowl, breathe into your lower back. Grounding down to lift up, roll the spine with both arms, sweep up. Warrior one. Hands to hips as you straighten through your right leg. Scoot the left foot forward, shorten the stance. Inhale as you find length, exhale, hinge from hips, lead with heart. Hands come down to your mat. Enjoy the hamstring stretch. Maybe lifting up onto fingertips, maybe float the right finger and bone into the right hip socket. See if you can float the right foot up off of the mat just an inch. Set the right foot back down. Walk the hands to the right, lengthen the spine, and now the pelvic bowl, breathe into your lower back. Left hand plants, average of right foot, right hand to your sacrum, roll that right shoulder back. Rolling the right arm up towards the ceiling, extend out from the right fingertips, deep ujjayi breaths. Exhale, both hands back down to the mat. Shift weight forward into your right foot, left leg lifts, standing splits. Right hand behind the right ankle, draw forehead towards shin, extend the left heel up towards the ceiling. Now you could, if you want to, just step the left foot behind the outer edge of the right foot, coming into a cross-legged forward fold at the front of the mat. Or if you want to challenge handstanders, feel free to take it up. So left leg extends, keep the hips neutral, push the floor away. Plug the femur head bone into the hip socket. Connect, but this time bring the legs right hip on top of the left. Cross leg variation. And then slowly lower, butt comes back as feet come forward. Work that counterbalance. Being right, taking up space. Sharing life force energy with that space. And then gently set down. Walk the hands to the right. Breathe into the outer left hip, left side body. Back through the center. Walk the hands to the left. Breathe into the outer right hip, right side body. Back through to center. Replace the left foot to meet the right foot front of the mat. Inhale as you peel chest forward, find length. 
Exhale, forward fold. Chair pose, bended knees, both arms sweep. Shift weight forward into the big toe bounce, heels lift, slowly lower down. Tip toe pose. Knees open wide, reach arms straight through and gently take a seat. Float both feet. Knees can stay bent or straight through the legs. Just a quick boat ride, followed by some pranayama. And by the way, this is Kapalabhati, also known as breath of fire that we're doing. Inhales, you lower. Exhales to lift. Inhales to lower. Exhales to lift. Lower, hold, breath of fire. Here we go. Three. Two. And one. Lift. Soles of the feet come together, knees out wide. Hands underneath your feet. Press the elbows into the inner thighs. I do want to mention to you, because this symbol, it gets kind of misconstrued. <laughs> and sometimes I do it out of habit. It is for yana yoga, right? The yoga of the thinking man, the path of knowledge. So the, and, and, and the way that I'm using it, <laughs> the three fingers are representative of the three gunas, the tamas gunas, the radhas gunas, the sattvic gunas. Uh, and then the index finger and the thumb are the individual self and the eternal soul connecting. So as you rearrange the gunas, you're able to transform yourself into the gold of the eternal soul, right? All right, I'm going to spine back up here to see. Just had to clarify. Knees come in feet wide. Hands behind the hips, press up, lift up. Malasana squat. So again, I, I think this is so crucial. Learning how to do crow pose before Shatharanga Dandasana, it seems harder. It, there's only two points of your foundation, your two hands in crow pose, but it will strengthen your arms so that you don't dump weight in unnecessary spaces, which can cause RSI later on. So sometimes people will just write off crow pose and never do it, and then they'll, they'll think Shatharanga is easy. Well, if you're doing the, the wrong thing and it's a continuous misalignment over time, that can have uh, ramification. So practice the crow pose. You don't have to do Ekapadavakasana one legged crow. Uh, you can just practice crow and then step the right foot back. But do a crow. And, and it's okay if the feet don't lift up the mat. Knees come high, feet towards the armpits. Here we go. And then wait four, lift one or both feet up. Maybe if it's calling in, slowly lower, crown to ground. Press it up, lift it up. Tripod headstand. All right, and that Jamdar Banda activation, chin lock, throat chakra, brow chakra connection. Knees come high up and in, press it, lift it up back into your crow, Bakasana. All right, shift weight into the left shin, right leg comes unglued, extend it back. Now set the right foot way back. Left foot steps between the palms, right foot swings down to 45. Inhale as you rise, heel to heel alignment. Hips are neutral. Drive that right hip forward as you drive the left hip back. Lift the frontal hip points. Drop all your ribs together. Relax the shoulders down the back. Hands come behind the back. Opposite thumb on top. Interlace. Broaden across the collarbones as you inhale. And exhale. Hinge from the hips. Lead with heart. You know, it just feels so good to air out your vortex. Right? Filling in the universal grid. And you kind of keep a long-standing inventory, especially if you practice regularly, of all those extra sticky spots that are a little bit more difficult to access. But we're constantly working our way into those spaces. Grounding down to lift up, roll the spine up. Both arms sweep up. Hands to hips as you straighten through your left leg. Scoop the right foot forward short of the stance. Inhale as you find length, exhale as the hinge from the hips, leave with heart. Hands come down to the mat. And I've mentioned this before. Alan Watts claims that nirvana literally translates to blown out. And as yogis, this really tripped me out when I first learned about it. Putting up onto your fingertips, straight through both arms, around and upper spine, pull left finger hip bone into the left hip socket. See if you can float the left foot off the mat just an inch. Eight limbs, I mentioned before, the limbs are like spokes on the wheel, and eventually they're all functioning simultaneously. Left foot steps back down, walk the hands to the left. And the eighth limb is samadhi, which is essentially the yogi equivalent to nirvana. 
Samadhi means ecstatic joy or supreme bliss. So I like to think we find so much joy in this process of excavating, illuminating, self-realization, self-actualization, right hand plants outer edge of left foot, left hand to your sacrum, stabilize the pelvic bowl, roll the left shoulder back, that we're already there, right? The very process of blowing out these chunks of karmic debris in our nadis, the tubular channels that life force energy flows through, is so blissful that we're already there. And bringing your awareness to the breath is a really, really epic way to find that bliss in your practice. Gaze at the left fingertips, deep ujjayi breaths, yogis. And exhale, both hands back down to the mat. All right, well done. V weight into your left foot, right leg sweeps up, standing splits. Left hand behind left ankle, drop forehead towards shin, and extend the right heel up towards the ceiling, breathe into the left hamstrings. Now, of course, if you'd like, you could just step that right foot to the outer edge of the left foot. And that's, that's totally accessible for everyone. Uh, again, maybe just take it up as, as stock for a potential excavation and transition in a future practice. Handstanders, take it up. Now, instead of just connecting the legs together at the top, left leg comes on top of the right. So coming into a cross-legged position here, upside down, and then butt back, feet forward. Find that hollow back, send breath into that corner of your universe. Check your notes. Whew, all right. Walk the hands to the left. I sometimes mention Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. It can be really misleading though, right? Like what, what does the circle represent but our spirit? And yeah, he's right side up. Walk the hands to the right. Breathe into your outer left hip. So sometimes I think it can, it can be a little bit misleading at times. I think that you can clear your whole sphere of existence right side up. Oh, we gotta get upside down. We gotta, we gotta actually explore all of the orientations with respect to gravity. That could have sent us also why we're infinite. Right foot steps to meet left foot. Inhale, field test forward, find length, arch spine. And exhale, forward fold it. Beautiful. Share pose, bend the knees, both arms sweep. All right, you bring your feet to about hips distance apart. From here, exhale, release the hands back behind you to forward fold. Inhale, rise up. Into your chair. Exhale, release. Love this Kriya. Again, you can go slow. You can go fast. Last three. Two. One, and in the forward fold. Peace sign fingers and thumbs, caps the big toes. Inhale as you find length of the spine. Exhale, pull your weight in, engaging your biceps. All right, so this is a tricky transition. Feel free to help yourself up if you need. And you can also work with the bent knee. Right hand comes to your right hip. Shift weight into your right foot. Root to rise with the left foot in hand. Now open that leg out to the left, maybe grow a tree branch. Option two, hinge at hips, slowly lower, left foot down to meet the right. It is optional, it's a tricky corner of the universe to infiltrate. Now the left leg lifts. Beneficial infiltration, of course. Back through the center, right hand reaches across. Catch outer edge of the knee or outer edge of the foot. Reach your left hand back. And twist. From navel as you twist, gaze is over left shoulder, left fingertips. Amazing. Back into center. Interlace fingers around the left sole of the foot. Slowly lower down. Crystal squatters take it to the ground. 
you're ready, press it up, lift it up, move to rise. Amazing. Well done, yogis, hands to hips, order branches here for five, four, three, two, and one. Sweep the left leg back. Hover the foot as it crosses the floor, warrior three. Maybe some airplane wings or hands to heart center if you want. You can extend those arms forward. Gently bend the right knee. Step the left foot way back. Inhale. Both arms sweep. High crescent pose. Hands come through heart center. Inhale as you find length. Exhale, twist to your left. Left elbow hooks over the right knee. You maybe extend the arms up and away with your ears back. Half bind, full bind, full binders, maybe take flight. Left foot steps forward, press up, lift up, rear to rise. Bird of paradise. With a twist, of course. Slowly lower, pressing down through the right foot, shift weight forward into ground. Left leg extends back. Step it way back. Release the thigh. Inhale, rise. High crescent pose. Open it out, warrior two. Adjust the stance. Heel to arch. Alignment. Relax the shoulders. Three, extend up your fingertips. Flip the palms to face up. Inhale as you draw your hands into heart center. Exhale to send it back out. And draw it. What are you calling it? Exhale. Releasing what's no longer serving. Inhale. Call it in. Now exhale. Send it out once more. Inhale. And exhale. Reverse your warrior. Left hand to thigh or calf. Lengthen through the right side body. Breathe into your right side body. Inhale as you rise. Right elbow, right thigh. Left arm extends forward. Extend inside angle. Maybe left hand reaches back for your right thigh. Right hand can step of the right foot. You can, if you'd like to, take a full bind. Right arm goes underneath the right leg for the full bind. Maybe catching fingertips or a wrist. Full binders, explore straightening through the right leg for a bound triangle. Then maybe left foot steps forward. Press up, lift up, reach your right. Bird of paradise. Gazing at a single point of focus or gristy. Straighten through standing. And then straighten through lifted. Send in breath. Send in your jag. Slowly lower. And then pressing down through the right foot. Shift way forward into crown. Extend the left leg back. Down tuck when you close on your way back. Find the counterbalance. Step the left foot way back. Release the butt. Rise, warrior two, and straighten through right leg as you rise. Heel toe that left foot for a short of stance. Deep bend the right foot, crease extend right up forward reach. Right hand to ankle shin floor, left arm extends up, twist. Firm the navel in as you twist. Gaze is at the left fingertips. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Beautiful work, yogis. Gently bend the right knee, lean weight forward. Press up, lift up. Half moon pose. Float that left leg up. Maybe bend the left knee. Reach back with the left hand for your left foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the room. And then gently releasing Chalkasana if you have it. And extend left leg back. Left hand to mat, square off the hips. Right arm extends up, twist. Gaze is at the right fingertips. Maybe bending in the left knee. Reach back with the right hand for your left foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Amazing work, yogis. Gently release, hands to mat. Standing split, straight, send left hip, breathe into the right hamstrings. And again, you can just step the left foot forward to make the right foot if you'd like. Or option two, 
Take it up, handstanders. I'm going to challenge you instead of taking it straight up from standing splits, since we did some external standing postures in that sequence. Try a puppy press. So you're going up with the hips external, intentional. It's more challenging to balance, but it is also another trajectory. And then extend the legs out wide. Connect the legs together at the top. All right, we're working again. Just our unique transitions. Try legs out wide. Butt back, those feet come forward. And then maybe a toe tap. And right at the bottom, inhale as you peel chest forward, find an arch. And exhale, forward fold. Chair pose, bend the knees, both arms sweep. And again, walk the feet, slip there, just hips distance apart. Find your Padabanda, so the outer edge is down, lift the inner arches up. Inhale, lengthen, we extend up your fingertips. Exhale, sweep the hands back behind as you forward fold. Inhale to rise up into your chair. Exhale, release. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last three. Last two. And last one. Four fold. Peace and fingers and thumbs. Catch big toes. Inhale to find length. And exhale, pull your weight in, engage your biceps. This time, left hand to left hip. Shift weight into your left foot, root to rise with the right foot in hand. Again, keep that breath long, deep, and audible. It's been I love about practicing the Ujjayi or any breath work technique before going into a sequence. To really have that strong, steady flow of Ujjayi as we move through the sequence. Open the right leg out to the right, maybe grow a tree branch to your left. Maybe hinge at hips, slowly lower. Right foot down to meet the left. Rising back up again, it's totally optional, that is tricky. Back through the center, left hand reaches across, catch outer edge of knee or outer edge of foot. Reach your right hand back and twist. Guard the navel in as you twist. Gaze is over right shoulder, right fingertips. Beautiful back through the center. Again, saturating all of this space with your breath as you hold space with your body. Slowly lower down. Pistol squatters. It's tricky. Feel free to skip it. Help yourself up if you need to. This is another one of those where you can work the controlled descent and build all the necessary strength and eventually one day you'll get the ascent. Here we go. Press it up, lift it up, root to rise. Beautiful work, yogis. Releasing the foot. Hands to hips or grow branches here for five. Four. Three. Two. One. Sweep the right leg back. Hug the foot. Warrior three, and the airplane wings. Hands in the heart center, you can extend arms forward to you if you'd like. Whatever is your preference. Spot the inner right thigh up towards the ceiling. Push out through the heel. Gently bend the left knee, step right foot way back. Inhale, both arms sweep. High crescent pose. So the main thing here is you want to maintain the neutral pelvic bowl. So if the pelvic bowl tilts forward, because you're trying to straighten the leg prematurely, bring back that bend so the hip stays neutral. You don't want to cause any unnecessary compression. Right, I know Chuck says on the hips, but <laughs> the spine is what we're really looking to open up, right? The container for our cerebral spinal centers, our antenna to source. Hands come back through the center. Inhale as you find them. Exhale, twist to your left. Right elbow hooks over, right or left knee. Maybe extend the arms, open the wings. Left hand can reach back. Have fine on the right hip. Right arm can thread underneath. 
full bind. Full binders, if you'd like to take flight, break the steps forward, press up, lift up, reach your eyes, bird of paradise. With a twist, of course. Slowly lower birds, pressing down through the left foot. Shift weight forward into ground, right leg extends back, down to half moon. On your way back. Step it way back. Release the bind. Inhale as you rise. High crescent pose. Both arms sweep up. Over that warrior two, adjust the stance. Heel to arch. Ankle and knee stacking. Grab left seat underneath you. Relax the shoulders, we extend up your fingertips. Palms flip to face up. This is really cool to do with your eyes closed, too. Inhale as you draw your hands in towards heart center. Exhale, send it back out. Inhale, what are you calling in? Exhale, what are you releasing? Once more, inhale. And exhale. Flip left palm, reverse your water. Right hand to that cap, lengthen through the left side. Breathe into your left side. Inhale as you rise, left elbow, left thigh. Right arm extends forward, extended side angle. Right hand can reach back for the left thigh. Left hand to the instep of the left foot. Maybe thread the left arm underneath for the full bind. Work towards straightening through that left leg. In the bound triangle, maybe. And then step the right foot forward. Press up, lift up, reach your eyes. Bird of paradise. Gazing at a single point of focus or dristy. Straight through standing, then straight through lifting. Send in breath, send in your jai. And then slowly lower front down again, birds. Pressing down your left foot, shift weight forward into crown. Right leg extends back, find the counterbalance. And stepping it way back, release the back. Rise, warrior two, straighten through left leg as you rise. Heel to right foot forward, short stance. Deepen in the left hip crease, extend the left arm forward, reach. Left hand falls to ankle shin floor, right arm extends up and twist. Firm navel in as you twist. Gaze is at the right fingertips. You may completely absorb as much prana in these parts of your field as possible. And share that space. Share that life force energy with that space. So that every part of you, every part of us, can breathe. Gently bend the left knee. Knee weight forward. Press up, lift up. Float the right leg up. Push up your heel, reach out the crown. Maybe bending in the right knee. Reach back with the right hand for your right foot. Kick the foot into the hand. Slingshot the heart forward towards the front of the runner. Gently release to extend the right leg back. Right hand to your mat, square off the hips. Now when you just go a little tiny bit deeper in all the shapes, that's when it really feels blissful. Not going for quantum leaps, but just blissful expansion. A nice slow burn. Bending the right knee, reach back with the left hand for your right leg. Kick the foot into the hand. Chapasana variation. Amazing work, yogis. Gently releasing chapasana if you haven't. And snap. Standing splits. Extend the right leg. Breathe into your left hamstrings. And again, you can just step that right foot forward. Even if you want to, sometimes it's kind of nice, even if you're taking it up. Kind of take the pressure off. Sometimes it feels like that left leg has been doing a lot of work. You kind of jiggle the legs out a little bit. And then when you're ready, handstanders. Take it up. And again, you can take it up with the standing split formation. I'm going to challenge you to try puppy press. And as I mentioned before, you can actually elevate your foot, place it on top of a block or something, so that you can find where your muscles are engaging. 
it is very much like a pulley system. So you want to grow that strength. Right leg lifts. Pee on the fire hydrant. Lead with the knee. And pull your way up. Extend. And then draw the legs together. Oh yeah, we're filling out lots of space today. Legs come out wide, butt back. Then can you pause and really saturate that space? Toe tap. Inhale as you peel chest forward, find some length. And exhale to forward forward. Well done, yogis. Chill pose, bend in knees. Both arms sweep. Shift way forward into the big toe mat. Lift your heels up, slowly lower it down. Knees up and wide, reach your arms straight through. Gently take a seat. This time, extend the legs out wide. I know, I know, we're doing it. <laughs> it's not everybody's favorite. This will really warm up your hips, and we will get into the hip flexors right after this. So, can't spray your right thigh. You learn to love it, right? When, it, when you realize how much space this allows you to take up when you have autonomy in your legs when you get upside down. Straighten the arms, rounding your upper spine. We love it, we love it. Plug the right through your hip one into the right hip socket and float the right foot here for five, four, three, two, one. All right, now, hands frame your right thigh, press it up, lift it up. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Flip that right arm up. Gently step back down. Well done, yogis. If you need to kind of massage your right thigh a little bit, feel free to. You may not be used to doing that work. It will grow with time, right? And as they say, <laughs> that's how it goes with muscles. Hands bring your left thigh. Plug the left femur head bone into your left hip socket. See if you can float the left foot up and pulse here for five, four, three, two, and one, gently step back down. Hold on, yogis. Lean way forward. Press up, lift up. Maybe float the feet up. Maybe. Left arm comes off. And gently release. Whew. Massage if you need it. And then hands come underneath the knees. Slide the feet together. Sweep the hips towards the heels. Hands underneath the feet, press the elbows into the inner thighs, forward fold. All right, just for fun, I'm gonna try and get all the different planes in of, in of the inversions. Feel free to skip. You can also just step back down dog. We're going right into the hip openers next. So this is kind of like a, a little bit of play time before we go deep down into our emotions. So draw the knees in, feet wide, hands behind the hips, press up, lift up, malasana, squat. So those of you that want it, I'm gonna offer up, this is, this is one of my favorite transitions or sequences to do, uh, Vakasana, toe tap, press up, handstand, back to toe tap, lower into Vakasana, into headstand, from headstand, press up into forearm balance, then from there, you can either go back into forearm balance or headstand from forearm balance, Crow pose, shoot it back, or I'm gonna offer this out too, just for fun. Again, if it brings you joy, then do it. If not, skip it, and maybe just watch so you can see the potential for navigating into various nadis or energetic tubular channels, uh, spaces in your vortex, right? Filling in your universal grid. You don't have to fill it all in all at once but just becoming aware of all these different channels that you could potentially activate over time. Um, the variation that I plan on taking is uh, forearm balance back through to vinyasa. So maybe we'll throw in a little scorpion, sweep it back, pull the chest forward, land with forearm staff. That's totally optional. Feel free to skip. Maybe you just watch, right? So uh, it's kind of nice to see how to like break it down so that you can navigate and I'll, I'll cue as we go along. So here we go. 
Knees come high up and in towards the armpits. Curl pose. All right, crows, toes to the forearms. Press up, lift up straight through the arms. I like to pause midway to make sure that I have a balance. Connect. Lower back down again. Toe tap. Back to block. Crown to ground. And stand it up. Alright, now forearms. I like to do one at a time to maintain the balance. Remember to send a pulse of energy down through the crown so you're really anchored in there as one arm transitions into the forearm balance. And then the other four transitions in strong through the crown. That's that rooting and rebending forces that allow us to anchor in. I'm essentially an anchor, teaching you all how to get anchor rights as well. Now, I prefer legs split, because that way it's easier to find the balance as you press. And you're pushing the ground away. To rise up into the four arm balance. Now maybe one foot, two taps. Helicopter through, opposite leg, foot toe taps. And then we'll Upa Vista, upside down. All right, here we go. Lower back, wind up the muscles along the lumbar spine, working towards the scorpion now. I'm going to swing the legs back as I pull the chest forward and slide the hands back for four limb step. Here we go. Woo! Vinyasa, Yonza, Urga Mukha. Exhale. Anamukha Svanasana. Again, you could also just step back to down dog. <laughs> if it brings you joy, if it brings you joy. Set the intention to eventually hold that space. And maybe more, right? There's so much more. Let's just, we're just touching the, the tip of the iceberg with our expansion work as we move out of Kali Yuga. Right leg extends as you now. Exhale, set the right foot to the outer edge of the right hand. Left knee lowers. Four arms lower. Ease into the hip stretch and nod those hips from side to side. Right hand can come to your right knee. Gaze over the right shoulder. Come onto the fleshy part of the left knee. Then left knee, reach back with the right hand for your left foot. Press heel towards seat. It's interesting. The breath will take on a kind of like a taste, right? And, and you'll notice too, as you expand into new space, you can feel yourself melt into a space that you previously haven't been in. Or maybe you haven't been in there for a while. Gently release. Come back through center. Walk the right foot back through midline. Straighten through right leg. Half splits, full splits. Slide right foot forward. Walk left foot back. And again, maybe if you are all the way down, tuck the left toes, lift left knee up, drive left hip forward. Untuck toes when you float the arms up. Maybe bend left knee, reach back with left hand for left foot. Quad stretch. Overhead grip if it's a part of your practice. Deep Ujjayi breaths. Gently release. Rebending your right knee. Walk the right foot behind your left wrist. Release the right knee behind the right wrist. Half pigeon pose. Gaze back at the left leg in line with the hip. Draw your right heel towards your groin as far as you need to to lessen the intensity of the stretch. Inhale as we find with exhale, forward fold it, and enjoy. Send in breath, send in your jai. Let go of what's no longer serving highest and best. 
again, it really is very much like there are parts of us that are suffocating, that aren't receiving any oxygenated blood flow. And our internal environment is our external environment. Our external environment is reflecting back at us exactly what is happening in our internal environment each and every moment. And so when we have an incident like this occur, um, you know, despite all of the conspiracy theories about what that chant and that mantra might mean, it really is indicating to us that there are parts of us in our microcosm that are not able to receive oxygenated blood flow. So I think it is so, so crucial that we remember to do this inner work. I still am, I, I obviously, I love all beings as the same self. I support everyone in whatever they're doing with their life and, and may they all have and lead the best life for them. Loka, Samasta, Sukhina Bhavan, too. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. But of course, I, I do think that this is a call to action, right? This is a call to embrace our karma yoga and to start purging these stagnant points of energy in our field so that breath can make its way into that space. All right, walking the hands back in. Bend the left knee to the back with the left hand for the left foot, press the heel towards the seat. I told you there would be hip flexor stretches. They feel so good though. I know the leg lifts are really hard and you might get a Charlie horse, but don't these feel so amazing, the hip flexor stretches? And it's, it's nice to heat things up first, right? Warm it up and then open it up. Maybe a little bit Vama Devasana. That is so delicious. Gently release. I feel like I'm like a waitress and I'm giving you the meal, but at the same time, I'm like enjoying my own meal with you. Like, and this is so good. It's kind of like you're like a, like a wine taster, you know, <laughs> tasting with everybody. Reaching the right hand back for the left fingertips, mermaid. And if you'd like, of course, those who grab the overhead grip, then you reach back behind. Catch. Big toe. Find that bind. And then overhead grip. Gently release that. Walk the hands back in. Tuck through the back toes. Engage your left thigh, lift the left knee up. Slide right hand to your left and sit the right hip down. Walk the hands to the right. Left forearm lowers, gently twist. Bringing the spine out of toxins, deep Ujjayi breaths. And back into center, pressing down through the forearms and drag that right hip back behind. So I am thinking about doing a, a Yama Niyama series and explaining how they are all woven into each other and the eight limbs and how, because uh, it is so intricate and so often we'll just say outward service, inward services. There's so much more to it. So I really want to expand upon each of these philosophical concepts. Walk the hands back in. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. Press up, lift up, left foot swings down, left arm extends forward, roll your left shoulder back, fall in triangle pose, maybe float that right foot. Left hand can catch, outer edge, reach it forward towards the middle of the room. Release, rebend right knee, left hand left, sweep the right leg up and back, hip circles, ankle circles. Rotate onto the outer edge of the left foot, get light in your right hand. Vashi stance in the side plank pose. You can lower knee, you can lower core, float a tree, maybe yogi toma. Just want to saturate the internet with as much yogic awareness, alchemical awareness, maybe work that bow or there is the overhead of Pendulasana. Release, wild thing, maybe full Urdhva Dhanurasana. Upward facing both knots. And then just for fun, maybe try a little bent knee, like Shatranga, and then straighten. Roll it back into downward facing. And vinyasa, if it's pleasing, of course, feel free to skip. I'm gonna try and take a little chin balance vinyasa. I say try because I have yet to do it with 
all of this new equipment that I have on, so <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Hopefully things don't get disheveled. So again, I'm going to break it down a little bit, so I'll go a little bit slower here than usual. Walk your hands back a little bit so you have a landing strip. And right leg can extend up. Bend the elbows, wrap them in, gently set the chin down on the ground. Rise it up. Maybe brush the hair with the tip. Vinyasa, your Urban Mudka. Exhale, a lot of Mudka. Nice down dog. Beautiful work. Up dog two, well done. Left leg extends as you inhale. Exhale, step the left foot to the outer edge of the left hand. Right knee lowers, forearms low. Ease into the hip stretch. You can lower down to the forearms if you'd like. Deep Ujjayi breaths into all of these sensations. Again, it's, it's a pivotal moment, an opportune moment. As soon as that space opens up, that's when the breath comes in. So keep that breath long, deep, and audible. Your knees. Left hand to your left knee. Gaze over your left shoulder. Come on to the fleshy part of the right knee. Bend the right knee. Reach back. Left hand for right foot. Press heel towards seat. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Get ready. Good girl, good girl. You right, everybody to breathe? Good girl. Aw. Walking the hands back in. Walk left foot back in midline. Straight through the left leg. Yes. My little yogi dog. You got the down dog and the up dog down. Slide that left foot forward and walk the right foot back. Whoop, whoop. Keep scissoring the thighs together. Activate the bond. Bringing the pelvic floor muscles. Maybe tuck back to the major right thigh with the right knee up. Set it back down, but keep the little bond that engagement. Maybe flip the arms up. Optional, bending in the right knee, reach back. Right hand, right foot, press heel towards seat. Quad stretch. If it's part of your practice, and again, I've shown you in prior practices how to use the strap if you need it. Please use the strap. You don't want to cause any unnecessary impingement. Release. Rebend. Left knee. Walk left foot behind right wrist. Release left knee behind left wrist. Gaze back and right foot. Right leg in line with the right hip. Inhale as you find length. Exhale forward fold. I really do want to emphasize that I personally am so sorry. I, I held off on my own practice because I was afraid of how it would be perceived by the yoga community. And of course, there are certain parts of the field, it's, it's so obvious, and they do say this, Yoganaga says it time and time again, when the truth really starts to be realized by the collective consciousness, it's going to be so obvious. And I, I went in, even after graduating from college, a philosophy major, I went in thinking, like, if we're doing single standing leg postures, okay, I'm sure you, I can even hear you guys following that, that logical theorem out to its conclusion. If we're doing single standing leg postures, hello, <laughs> that's a single standing arm postures. And so I got into the yoga practice and I was like, wait, what, why, why have we stopped? Why, I felt like a little kid and it was like, I learned how to stand on two feet, but then it was like, okay, well, that, like, what about walking? Or can, can we walk? Can we, can we jog? Can we, can we do anything? No, no, you're only supposed to do, you're only supposed to stand, stand on two feet. I was like, what? But no. And then my Kundalini started firing and it became abundantly clear that the more space I was holding, yes, the physical posture is important. Maybe some people aren't gazing inwards and, and processing their karmic degree with their inner technology. But still, the physical body is the intermediary for every dimension of our existence, and if the physical body can't get there, then the oxygenated blood flow can't get there. Being spiritual implies also the physical, the necessity of the physical, because the breath follows the cardiovascular system. 
And as we hold space and all these different orientations with respect to gravity, we're able to reactivate more nadis, which allows the energy to allocate into the central axis with even more intensity and amplification. <sighs> so I did hold off and allow myself to plateau in my practice, uh, trying to bring kind of a team of, of yogis up to up to par, and um, it just it didn't work out. I don't want to get into it, but it didn't work out, and so especially with all of the world events that are happening right now, uh, I myself am just going for it. And I really, honestly, I have seen too much, I've felt too much. There have been way too many external reaffirmations for my own ego to doubt the validity, the importance of the physical aspect of the practice. And yes, it does take discipline. It takes a tremendous amount of discipline to be able to hold this space. But what I am suggesting is that by going slow and taking your time as we excavate this new space, it can still feel absolutely blissful, right? You can still be in Samadhi and we can all enjoy this process in our own unique ways. So I'm not suggesting that everybody has a certain form of yoga that they must follow. Each of us has our own unique dance. And I, I just want to impart as much of my own knowledge as I possibly can in the hopes that it helps someone out there hold more space, which inherently benefits our whole collective consciousness, our shared reality, macrocosm. Uh, that to me is uh, success, is, is, is why I do it, is why I set up my tripod and put you know, my camera on and I you know, grab this little thing and I put it on. I'm not making a lot of money doing this. I'm like, <laughs> We've got to rise up. It's time. And this has to become accessible for all. Yoga is universal. This is temple maintenance. So yeah. and I'm, I'm hoping that we can, we can all start to ascend together peacefully without having to have all of these really intense uh, triggers happening in our collective external reality. Um, like these, these really massive alarm clocks that are very egregious and, and troubling, <laughs> disconcerting, I think is the word. Um, so, but I, I understand free will and it's, start to walk the hands in, it's important to let people come into their awareness when they're ready. So, bend the right ear, back with the right hand, the right foot, press heel towards the seat. And I've gotten quite a bit of flack for kind of being um, as outspoken as I have been about yoga. But we are all interconnected, and I do think at some point in time we're going to get to a precipitating incident in terms of the amount of kundalini energy that we're flowing. And we'll all have these uh, cities reactivated in inner technology, and we'll all be able to see all the karmic debris that each of us is holding in each our own microcosms, and we'll all hold each other accountable for the karmas that have yet to be purged, gently release. Overhead current, maybe. And it won't be uh, judgmental because we're all the same self. It'll be very supportive. But I really do have to thank all of you for jumping on board the Kundalini train this early on. Walk the hands in, tuck the back toes, engage the right thigh, lift the right knee, slide left leg to the right, set the left hip down. And it's it's been so fun. I call it my Kundalini research. Walk the hands to the left, right form, right form lowers. And you can see how exactly our culture has stifled its Kundalini as a collective. But also, you can see how with external technology, the way that it is, and our, our means of, of sharing information rapidly, how we will rise really quickly and with, with ease and grace. Walk the hands back to the center, press down to the forearms, drag that left hip back behind, bring it to the psoas. Walk the hands back in, press up, lift up. And we have already succeeded. We have already won. Love wins, right? It swings down, right arm extends, roll that right shoulder back. All right, maybe float the left foot up. The right hand can catch outer edge, reach it forward towards the front of the room. Release, rebend left knee, right hand plant, sweep left leg up and back. 
Maybe take it into your Vajrasasana, side plank pose. Float a tree, yogi talk. Optional, bend the left knee, left hand can catch. The left ankle, left shin, overhead grip. If it's a part of your practice. Release, wild thing, maybe full urva, dhanurasana. Again, just take it. It suggests a movement in your Urdhva Dhanurasana. You can bring your feet together and bend the knees like in chair pose. And then straighten. Back into wild thing through downward facing. Whew. All right. And again, if it calls in, set yourself up for success. Give yourself a landing strip for your chin to rest comfortably on cushy yoga mat. Left leg extends up. Bend in the elbows, wrap them in. Set the chin down, lift it up. Vinyasa. Inhale, Urva. Exhale, Anamuka. Child's pose, knees to mat, hips to heels. Roll the spine forward over your thighs, rest brow on the mat. And just pause for a few moments. Absorb, integrate, digest. Rolling the spine up through to seated, cross the shins, roll up the legs, extend the legs forward. Right leg draws in. Right leg comes up and over the left. Keep your left leg straight, put me onto your left seat, slide the left heel back towards your outer right hip. Right hand behind, the sacrum, left arm extends. Exhale, left elbow, outer to right knee. Firm navel as you twist, gaze over the right shoulder. And now it probably sounds so Leo, right? But you really are the whole universe. And all this work that you do, it does have outstanding ripple effects. Gently release and counter twist to your left. Back to the center and stack the knees, heels towards the outer hips. And you get to a certain point in your practice where eventually all of the veils just start to fall away and you see how everything is an unfolding of probability based upon how much space you're holding in your microcosm. Simple crossing position is fine. Right arm extends up, bend the elbow, reach the left hand up the back from the fingertips. And that's, it's all part of the process. I think that also understanding our inherent interconnectivity, it is also a source of joy. And kind of, especially now at the, begin, at the beginning stages of navigating from Kali Yuga to Sasha Yuga, and those we find like that's before cool. It's like nobody really realizes that they kind of think, oh, that's not so cool that you do yoga, <laughs> right? They, they have no idea. Rolling the spine back up through the seat. Release the arms. And shake them out. Hands back behind. Flare kick the legs. Again, if you need to, our right leg can stay straight. Left foot plants, left hand behind the sacrum. Right arm extends. Exhale, right elbow, outer edge of left knee. From the navel as you twist. So you can kind of... Uh, Kind of keep it as like an inside joke with yourself, you know, like, haha, I just blessed all of the universe with my expansion today. You know, no big deal. NBD. Gently release and counter twist to your right. Back to the center and stack those knees, heels towards our hips. But it is really, really time. Um, especially when. You see so many, so many things coming out uh, in terms of technology that are so closely uh, affiliated with or exemplary of the inner technology that we already have within our system. Uh, left arm extends, bend the elbow, reach the right arm up the back. It's very, very draconian, and we we can still see how uh, that draconian energy can be transmuted. Right, you can see it as like. Okay, well, instead of maybe imprinting a microchip, we all figure out how to use our spines as the antennas to source that they are, and we all learn how to connect to unity consciousness. You know, instead of having a big brother or a nanny state, 
watching over us and making sure that we are uh, being properly policed, maybe we all again hold each other accountable because we recognize that we're all the same self and we can all see what each other, each, 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 which each same self, I should say, right, because there is no other, is doing because we're no longer cut off from source by these uh, mentally conditioned impediments that inhibit. Or hold it, of course, if you like. And then the line spine back up here, see? Release the arms. So that's another source of joy that you can find, right? Walk the hands back behind, straight legs out in front. Instead of uh, fearing the 1984 or animal farm type outcome, slide the flesh of the bone out from underneath. You can think, no, we're, we're bringing about the, the actual awakening of our internal hard drive software. Sweep the hands on and up, exhale forward fold. I like to call it uh, software and, and hard drive because it's both the masculine and the feminine. We want to find that balance. Rolling the spine back up through the seat. Legs come out wide, gonna get all the corners of the universe, not excluding middle splits. Again, you can stay in your Upavishta if you'd like to just stay with your middle or your wide leg seated position. Those of you that would like to take it up into your middle, press it up, lift it up, and float it on in. Again, only go as far as feels comfortable, so it's enjoyable. And then press it back into your middle, or into your, your wide leg at seated position. Walk the hands over to the right, right arm in, seam, right leg, sweep left arm, open overhead, side leg flex your push. Back through to center, over to the left. Left arm in, seam, left leg, seat the right arm up overhead. Side body stretch. Back through to center. And four fold one more time. Walk the hands back in. Hands underneath your knees, slide the feet in. All right, yogis, I'm going to navigate into the bulbous root pose with you today. Uh, this is not one of the shiniest corners of my microcosm, so, right? It's, it's the postures that you don't like are the ones that you need the most, so you just gotta start. This is one of those corners that never gets any breath. It never gets any air time, so here we go. Put your feet up. Kind of hold your feet in like so. I know. It's, it's like, wait, what? This is a thing. Nobody teaches it. Nobody teaches it. I don't know why. Okay, so holding on to both of your feet. Bring both of the edges of your feet. I like to kind of spread out my fingers wide so I can kind of interlock my fingers. Eventually those knees will make their way down to the floor. And then gently release. Again, just go as far as feels comfortable. Woo, draw the knees in. Make your way down onto your back. Hug your right knee in, extend your left leg out. Scoop the hips to the right, draw the right knee over to your left. Stacking the right hip on top of the left hip, over the right shoulder to the floor. Breathe into your lower back. Back to the center, half happy baby. You know what's up, yogis, maybe. Another, not too often, loved up part of the microcosm. One leg, right leg comes behind the head. Ah, oh, so glorious. You, again, you learn to love it. It may not be the prettiest shape, but it feels so amazing on the lower spine, especially if you've been back bending with me all practice. Gently release. Hug that right knee in and extend switch. Hug left knee and extend right leg out. Again, feel free to back off on the back bends if you know you need to build more infrastructure. That is really all on you to find that perfect balance between masculine and feminine, especially in heart chakra. Draw the left leg across the body and over to your right. Step left hip on top of right. Gaze over your left shoulder. And I think it also definitely includes solar plexus because if you are uh, not strong enough to carry the energy through the lumbar and into the thoracic, 
then these guys are the ones that get scrunched. Back through the center. So sometimes you do need to take a break from back bending and focus on your core more. Half happy baby. Maybe leg behind the head. Amazing work. Gently release when you're complete. Legs extend straight up, wrap the elbows in, press up, lift up for your shoulder stand. Shoulder stand can lower down into the last one. Feet to the mat, hands come behind the back, interlace, press palms together. Maybe bend the knees around the ears for your squeeze. Slowly low. Matsyasana, hands underneath seat, press up, lift up, crown to ground, breathe into the front of the throat. Gently release, happy baby pose. And again, if you'd like, maybe double leg behind the head, Dvaipada Shirshasana, Yoga Nidrasana. All right, we're gonna finish with the breathing technique. Gently release. This breathing technique is really powerful, so I recommend doing it in Shavasana. So get your most comfortable Shavasana position on. Feet flop open, palms face up, close the eyes. And I'll probably have to do another uh, class YouTube video just on this breathing technique because it is that, that powerful. But we're just gonna do a little, little short taster of this powerful breathing technique. And it is for the Clearing and purging of heart chakra. It sounds like this. <sighs> so you'll take a deep inhalation, feel your chest rise, a second deep inhalation, feel your belly rise, and then exhale everything out. And it can be kind of an exasperative exhale. Namaste.